Well, good morning, everybody. Welcome to my midweek block, first one in uh, two weeks or three weeks. We, Jill and I have had a wonderful time down in St. Ives. I don't know if you've ever been to St. Ives. Absolutely beautiful. We had an apartment over at the beach. So most days, as you remember last week, the weather was wonderful. Most days on the beach and most evenings with a nice crisp glass of Chardonnay to enjoy with our meal. So that was great. So we're back, back to work, back to all the action. A big thank you to Chris, who covered our two Wednesday services, and to Colin, who did the Sunday service. And I hope you enjoyed their ministry. And I hope if you watched the services, you enjoyed Chris's services as well. I saw two things. I always like a challenge of a holiday is to see things that you've never seen before. So um, first thing we saw, we'd never, I'd never seen sandwich turns, not knowingly. So we had um, a small fishing boat in the harbour, sorry, in the bay in front of us. And there were small turns that were, fl fl they flutter around and then they dive. And um, by a process of elimination, we worked out they were sandwich turns. So that was exciting for anyone who likes birds. So that was exciting for me. And the second thing was that one evening on, on an evening walk, Jill and I saw a pod of dolphins feeding um, out at sea. And that was incredibly exciting. I've never seen dolphins off the coast of England before. So great. So it was a good holiday. We're both rested, but we're great to be back. And I hope you are well. Yesterday was a big day. Um, Boris Johnson's announcement on tightening of restrictions. And I must admit, when we were down in St. Ives, people really weren't paying any attention. Um, that you meant to do one way, uh, on the left, going up the street, and everyone was just all over. So it's, it's hardly surprising that we are now back where we are. So I hope you're right with it. I was worried that um, the rule of six would change to so no, no going into homes. So at least I can see my daughters, uh, or see Jem particularly. So really, really pleased. But we've all got to play our part, haven't we? We've all got to do our bit now to bring that pandemic back down, um, especially for our schools. I was with Johnny yesterday, going to do my first assembly tomorrow, back in the building with children, doing one class a week and then having Zoom for the rest of the school. So that's exciting. But the pressure on schools with all those children, you know, all those families, really difficult. So we need to continue to pray for Johnny and Emma, our two head teachers in the village. But I'm just thinking about everybody, you know, I'm really continue to worry about people's jobs. Um, the furlough scheme comes to an end soon. What does that mean for people? My my next door neighbour, she's already left British Airways after a really good career, but she's retraining as paramedic. Wonderful. So I'm really excited for her because I think actually doing something like that, having served British Airways to so now, you know, serve people in a different way. Wonderful. So I'm really excited for Jackie. Um, worried a little bit about those who are still feeling vulnerable because we need they're the ones we need to protect by behaving. So the masks, really important. Thank you to everyone who's come to church and worn their masks, making sure that we keep that social distance, washing our hands um, and just being careful, being really careful. That's going to be the most important thing. We we had a, a passage this morning um, in our uh, readings and the reading for Sunday as well. So if you're going to be in the service uh, for Sunday, you'll see it um, from the prophecy of, uh, of Ezekiel chapter 18. I love this. This is really good. I love it. I love it when, the, when, <laughs> when you have these kind of exchanges in the Bible. It says, yet you say, this is uh, God speaking to the people of Israel, the way of the Lord is unfair. Hear now, O house of Israel, my way unfair? Is it not your ways that are unfair? You accuse me of being unfair. Actually, it's you who are unfair. It's pretty, it's one of the great theological discussions, isn't it? About, you know, how much is God to blame for the things? And I, I don't know what I feel about that. We had lots of discussions at college about that, about, you know, um, I don't feel that God, and it, I know it's a strong, a lot of people use it, um, uh, that God in some ways does things to us, to, in a sense, to punish us or whatever. I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I personally don't think that's right. I, I don't feel that's right. I think that God is a just God. I think God is a righteous God. I think God is a loving God. So God's desire is that, that our lives will be good lives. <clears throat> but things happen. There's a frailty in our humanity. So the unfairness, our God, God being unfair, I think probably we're, we're more likely that we're more unfair on ourselves, how we treat our bodies, how we treat our world. There are moments and there are things which are really difficult and very hard to <clears throat> make sense of. Um, and it's easy 
um, to blame God, I think. Um, and I think God's probably quite happy to absorb our anger at times. But, but most of the time, the things that we struggle with are things that we create in the way that we live or the way that we treat our world or, or whatever. And, and even when there's those moments when it's nothing to do with how people have lived, you know, it's just a, a tragic set of circumstances. It's often the way that we deal with each other in that which becomes the mark of us. And um, the passage from Ezekiel um, says at the end, turn then and live. <clears throat> and it says just before that, get yourselves a new heart and a new spirit. There's, God's, God has this real passion that we live and that we can live life in its fullest sense. Now, if you define that by the, what the world would say, then that's about having possessions and all those sorts of things. But actually, God's definition of living is to know love, to know his love and to know the love of those around us. That's real life is to 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 live in the knowledge of love. So when people don't, there's responsibility for God's people to help people to find that love and that's, and particularly to um, to live that love. But turn then, that's what repent means, turn your life around and live you know and if we're living lives like with climate change where we're slowly destroying our planet then let's turn and live properly live within our means within the resources and the abundance that God has given us and at this time that we're reflecting on harvest those are the very things we are surrounded by the abundance of creation we need to give thanks for that but we also need to um, recognize how frail humanity is and that where people don't experience love how do we then show that and how do we help them to encounter God's love through the things that we do, through our worship, through our prayers and through our lives? And we did the parable this morning of the two sons, the one who said he would and then wouldn't and the one that said he would and then would not. And what Jesus is getting at there, and it picks up slightly what Ezekiel is saying, is that there are those who like to say yes and it all looks great, but there's nothing going on under the surface. Or there's those who say no, but actually through the love of God, do the right thing. And we're in a time now when doing the right thing is important. So can I commend to you, let's work together. Um, if you need support and help, then phone me or Alison or Roger or Derek or Lynn or Janet or Roger in Selham. Let's work together. Let's play our part in bringing this pandemic down. But in the, the isolation that some will feel, Let's make sure that everyone feels loved. It's great to be back with you. So let's say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Look forward to seeing you all again soon. Thank you ever so much, everybody.